Is your business struggling to stand out from the crowd online? At Webamax, we specialize in turning clicks into customers. From SEO and PPC to social media management and stunning web design, we've got you covered. Boost your online presence and drive real results. Ready to take your business to the next level? Visit webamax.com. That's W-E-B-I-M-A-X.com for a free digital analysis. Roll the web with webamax.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Back with another episode of Keeping Current with Kansas City. This is that bell from the KC Soccer Journal. With me, as usual, Daniel Sperry from the KC Star. I feel like it's been a couple of weeks since we talked, man. It's been a while. I think I went on vacation. I went on. Uh, we we had a lot of other. Uh, yeah, it, it's been a while. It's been a long time. It's been like at least three weeks. Is what it feels like. Well, at least officially on the pod, we've talked like a lot of days in between, <laughs> like almost every single day. Um, Sunday, case. Father's Day, I think, was our first break from each other in like a week, two weeks, maybe. Something yeah. Like that. Do you have a good Father's Day, man? I did. Did you? I did. I went to breakfast with the family, chilled out and watched TV the rest of the day, just like movies, yeah. nothing special, nothing spectacular. And then daughter went off to work and wife made dinner by going to a uh, noodles company. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so nothing too special. Yeah. yeah. I, I got to play golf with my dad over the good. weekend, which was really good. Um, I know you're fighting for his, tea time. I know my dad's had his share of uh, health issues over the last uh, like calendar year, and uh, he's finally mostly passed them and learning how to like live with what he's got to live with basically for the rest of his life. And uh, and when I say that, I'm just I'm not going into detail for the sake of everybody, but right. <laughs> but at the same time, it, it's one of those things. It's it's not a, a serious like serious serious thing but like it is just something that he has to there's some stuff that he's got to deal with every day for the rest of his life and trying to relearn and that you can go through normal life and do the things you love to do while having those complications and those things in the back of your mind and learning that you can be normal to do that again Uh, so it was really good to get out on the golf course with him had a good time Uh, it didn't get too hot on saturday and then on Sunday, uh, went to well, we did dinner with my wife's family on um, Saturday night, and then did lunch with my family, and finished off watching the the U.S. Open golf tournament yesterday. So that is my preferred Father's Day event: is to go to church, go eat some food, and sit and watch the U.S. Open until it's over. So to each their own. All right, man. 
we uh we were both at the KC current uh versus Chicago Red Stars game this last yeah. Friday. Friday, yeah. A lot of days yeah. running in there. Um yeah. Two two draw. Gave up a goal early, gave up a goal late, two in the middle. Uh what's the barring injuries and all that stuff, what's your takeaway from how they're playing right now? They are playing better than the results that they're getting on paper. If that makes sense. Um, And this is going back to even before the international break. Um, This is a team that has um, throttled teams in the attack and just not been as clinical as some of the chances that they created. Um, and, you know, they they had the nice five-goal outburst uh, the other night um, against Seattle. Um, Seattle is not a very good team. Um, Chicago is a decent team, but they are very pragmatic and compact. Um, and so or attempt to be compact. And so the current did whatever they could to create chances. They created a boatload of them. Expected goals numbers will tell you that. The shot totals tell you that. The possession numbers tell you that. The eye test told you that. Um, the current were the vastly superior team on the field. And I have yet to, f- I have yet to watch a Casey current game. I think the only game where I wondered if they were the superior team was the game against Gotham. And like this was like the, we're in this this the Chicago game is like a microcosm of who they've been, um, you know, basically since the that Houston game, um, with one outburst, right? They've had a hard time finishing as consistently as they were early on, and they are kind of letting in some silly goals here and there that are, uh, you know, tough to deal with. Um, poor set piece defense, um. They have conceded the most corner kicks of any team in the NWSL. Um, and that is, or sorry, conceded the most corner kick goals of any team in the NWSL. Um, and that is a concern because teams are going to get corner kicks. This is how soccer works. They happen. This was kind of Locko's comment at the end of the game. You can't stop. You can you you can do what you can to try and negate set pieces happening, but the but the issue is is if you can't defend the one of four that you face an entire game, or if you can't go four for four, it's not like it's you know they're facing 15, 18 set pieces a game. You just cut down the number of set pieces and maybe they're okay. They're facing four or five set pieces a game, and every single time they take one, you're worried about whether or not they're going to concede on it, and that's a, a problem for them going forward. But they are just so dynamic with the ball. They can be so suffocating at times um, that, uh, you know, they look so dominant uh, for large, large swaths of games. Um, and if they can put teams away in those swaths, then, um, you know, you can overlook the set piece things. But the issue is that's a that's a recurring issue now, late in games. Yeah, it felt like for a little while they were getting better at the set piece issues. Uh, mm-hmm. and then it seems like now they're not again. I don't know if that was uh with since Gabby Robinson's went out, but it just has felt like it's returned. Maybe they never had it solved and it was just lucky, but it felt like they were doing better at that issue. Um, the attack is like you said, extremely dynamic, it's exciting every time. Tim Wah is going to get, I, I meant to look this up like how many shots she has now versus how many goals she has and i forgot but it looks like you might be looking it up for me she's just a she's just going to be a volume goal scorer she's going to get a few shots and she's going to score some of them she's not going to be very clinical but it's going to be fun watching her uh with dabinia out there this last week did it feel like she wasn't quite in sync yet or did it just feel like maybe there's too many attacking options i because they still had a lot of opportunities, but they just weren't quite finishing them at that point. Um, I honestly, I think it's maybe I, I might look at Bia Zanarato in that game as one that maybe didn't do what she should have with what she had. Um, Bia scored a goal, yes, good goal, got it. Um, but she had multiple chances that were better throughout the game. That if Bia puts 
one or two of those away, maybe one more of those away. Uh, Temwa had a couple of 1v1s with Alyssa Nair. Um, those, each one of them put one more chance away. That game is 4-1 before that corner kick at the end comes. And it's a com- you're looking at a completely different thing. Maybe Chicago's too dejected at that point to really uh, kind of go through the corner kick. So, um, you know, I think it's it, – I don't know if I would blame Dubini in this game. Actually, I thought I thought they were incredibly dynamic with her in the midfield. And I actually, um, th- I did think the midfield of – the midfield trio of Vanessa, Lowe, and Dubinia, in my opinion, was too attacking. And I hate for the fact that it was an injury that brought Vanessa off. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like for the team in the end. Um, but bringing on Claire Hutton at that point then stabilized them a little bit more defensively. And I thought it actually freed up Dabinia, um, uh more so in, in the final third. And I thought Dabinia looked better through the stretch of the game. But I didn't think Dabinia necessarily had a bad game. Um, she Yeah, really and I don't mean to say that. she had a bad game. It's just that... Yeah, maybe not completely back in sync, or again, you're looking too many different options at that point. Yeah, and I mean, this this is one of the first times that we've had all season with right. all three of them on the field. Um, you know, Dabinia did not Dabinia did not play in the first half uh, last week uh, in the Seattle match um, because she was coming back from international break, and Bia came off at halftime, and so all three of them were not at the on the field at the same time. It has been minute the amount of minutes the time that we've had with all three of them on the field and so maybe there's a little bit of grace for them learning to kind of figure it out because it's going to have to be i don't think it's going to be a front three of dabinia um uh with you know with like dabinia on the wing there i'd be shocked if it was a front three eventually of bia temwa and dabinia um dabinia seems kind of more fit to be underneath them and so it'll They'll just have to kind of learn how to play with each other. But I think they will. They're too talented to not figure it out. It, yeah, it's it's going to be exciting Mitch, no matter which way we look at it. Because uh, I, I wouldn't want that to be the front three anyway because I'm really enjoying uh, Michelle Cooper also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she has not been kind of like in front of net dangerous, but what she provides in build up the physicality that she provides – uh, in winning second balls, this team is a uh, second ball vacuum, um, aka the German duel. If you didn't know, uh, there's apparently a name for winning second balls is winning. There's duels, and then there's the German duel, which is winning the second ball. Wow. Um, Michelle Cooper, I know, very good, good old Germans. Um, but Cooper's really good at winning second at, at pressing and helping that recycle of turning, you know, winning second balls and all that kind of stuff, and so. Um, she provides, and I actually, the more and more that I watch her out there, the more and more you see the steps that she took forward, um, from last year, uh, as in a rookie year, you can see that there hasn't been like this, like drop off or anything from her. I think she, it's, she got physically fit and healthy after the injury, uh, in the, in the preseason, um, and has really, really kind of come into her own on that side and provides the right kind of presence out there. Yeah, and I have to admit, I wasn't always impressed with her as a winger. I always thought she'd be better as a nine, but she's been playing really well as a winger. So I, kudos to whatever vlaco has been doing with her, or maybe it's just her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> she's incredibly talented, right? Right. Um, yeah, <laughs> and she was a very high, highly rated prospect. There, she has a good mind for the game, and I, I think defensively she really puts in a shift uh, out there but to like to, to see her feel now look as comfortable on the wing as she does um versus what we saw at times last year where it was kind of very forced she's really comfortable taking players 1v1 on on 1v1 now and i don't think we ever saw that last year um and so that's the that's the one thing that in her game that that is really taking a step forward out, out in that wing side that i've been really impressed with just uh, going along with that, just so much confidence in like every facet of the game on the field, off the field, just hearing her talk in post game presser the other day, uh, a couple yeah. games ago. And she's just so confident, so outgoing. And yeah, she's this whole team, the whole attack is a pleasure to watch. We just would like to see them finish the results a little bit better. All right. So I've got your shot stats for you. 
Um, so Temwa, uh, the only player who averages more shots um, per 90 is Sophia Smith because she has played less games. Um, she Sophia has 10.890s. Remember, she was suspended for Rain Thorns this week because of her double yellow uh, hijinks on the sideline. I... Yes, but also hilarity at this point. So I, I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take it for the entertainment. But well, it was not great for her. Um, but Temwa Chuinga has leads the league in shots taken. She has fifty-seven shots this season. Uh, Twenty-nine are on target. So more than fifty percent of her shots are on target. Um, and uh, she's got eight goals. Um, so uh, and she she has a higher um, goal to shot ratio uh than anyone else in uh sorry not go than anyone else in the league but between if you're kind of comparing her and sophia are in that same mix right for for yeah. shots goals you know sophia has nine goals on 52 shots temwa has eight goals on 57 shots um temwa's at uh you know her goals per shot or sh- yeah goals per shot is uh 0.14 um Sophia Smith is 0.13 um, goals per shot on target. However, because more of Timo's shots are on target than Sophia Smith's, um, Sophia Smith has her beat there, which is a 0.32 to 0.28. Um, the only player that's kind of in the same number in terms of like a per 90 uh, basis uh, that's within the same uh, range is Barbara Banda and Uli Matasar uh, from uh Washington Spirit, and then of course Barbara Brandon uh, from Orlando Pride. Um, so that should tell you where Tim was at within that upper echelon of attackers within this league, and you know she's kind of converting at about sub- a similar rate. Um, Barbara Banda is at a point two two, and Sar is at a point one eight. Um, so they're a little bit better, but they've taken less shots. So. Yeah, I was doing some looking too while we were talking, and uh, she has an XG of nine with a goals of eight, so pretty close to on target for the goals that she takes. Yeah. All right. Let's uh take. Do we use any more takes from this uh last match before we move on to the more sad stuff? Um, just that I I, I mean I really I really do think that in general um like. And we can talk big picture of the current, but I, I I think this is this is one of those where you're frustrated with it. Um, but at the same time, um, you know these things happen. This is sports. Um, yeah. and if they can at some point figure out how to the better defend set pieces, that'd be great. Um, but um, right now that's an Achilles heel for this team, uh, and uh, they've really it's the one area of the game that's really really killing them. Uh. And surprisingly, Vlaco was very, yeah, okay, it happens. Yeah, I, th- I thought he'd be a little more irritated at the team, but he was very much at sports, at soccer. It happens. We'll get better at it. Kind of attitude. Yeah, he was. He was much more okay about it than I expected him to be. Quite honestly. Yeah, I, I, the other thing is too is, um, in game thirteen of the season. Do you crush your team or do you kind of protect the confidence? Because ultimately there's like nothing you can do wrong that you can say wrong about, I'd say 99% of the Kansas city currents performance uh, right. in that game. And, <clears throat> you know, having, uh, you, you don't want to destroy the confidence of the really good things that are happening that are in the long run, more necessary for them to go deep in a season and go deep in the playoffs and maybe win a shield um, than, you know, the other one. And the other one is fixable. It's a fixable thing. The other one, you don't want to break um, something. So I, I, I understand it, but I, I, I do think there might be a point to that if it doesn't get fixed, that it will come to where he has to kind of uh, kind of blast somebody. But game 13 of the season – is that where you're ready to do it? I don't know. Yeah, exactly the halfway point. All right. Uh, we'll be right back with the next segment. Now's the time to save 30% on wedding jewelry only on BlueNile.com. 
Make sure your wedding ring is the one with your pick of diamond and lab-grown diamond bands, all hand-finished and graded for excellence. Or surprise her with something blue she'll love for life, like a stunning pair of sapphire earrings. Blue Nile's jewelry experts are available 24-7 to help, from fit questions to style advice. Right now, get up to 30% off at BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Think you know the Brooks Ghost? Think again. Introducing the all new, better than ever Ghost 16. Now with nitrogen infused cushioning for lightweight, supreme softness that feels good every step, every street, every single day. So go ahead, take your daily joyride in the all new nitrogen infused Ghost 16. It'll turn your everyday miles into everyday endorphins. Let's run there. Head to brooksrunning.com to learn more. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. And we're back. Uh, okay. So we, we were talking about the game. Uh, one thing we didn't really mention, that early goal that was given up. Uh, Mal Swanson did, as some people will say, Mal Swanson things. But she got the ball, took it from a tight angle. Uh, AD was in the right spot, opened up her arm a little too much, and the ball went basically just right under her arm. It was a very tight fit. I mean, honestly, if the arm was a little bit closer, it doesn't go in, but she's probably protecting wide a little bit. It's just the way it goes. That's probably saved 98% of the time, 95% of the time. Um, Yeah. You were making a face when I said she was probably in the right spot. Did you not think so? I thought she was a little too far past the near post at that point. Um, I think if she is closer back in towards her line, like because I was looking at it uh, on like a slow-mo replay, and I think she actually comes out past the near post. Um, And I wonder, and, and in that, and in her protection of the near post, um, what she would have been incredibly hard for Swanson to place there based on like her body position and how she had and how she was set up. I mean, she hit it with her weak foot, she hit it with her left foot. But um at the same time, like that that's a really hard angle for that ball that is curving this way to sneak it into that post. Mouse Swanson is talented enough to do that, but it's one of those where she was so worried about the near post. I think she actually slides too far out and it opens up that angle for her to squeak it through in that arm. Because if she's a little bit further back then her body, her actual body is, uh, is in front of that shot versus it going under her arm in that spot. Does that make sense? So it, she closed down the angle the, the shot angle physically and forced her to go to the far post, made sure you're not going. Which is post. rule number one. Which is rule number one. The problem is, though, I just think she's like a, like a step or two too far out there at that point because it then there's a point to when you're trying to close down the angle as a goalkeeper that in trying to close it down too hard actually opens up the angle on the back post. Um, and so, like, there, there's there's just it's a little, I mean, I, I, I really think it's like a yard difference for her. Um, and, and I think that shot is, is stoppable. Um, in that sense so I think it's a frustrating goal to give up Um, I will say like nobody everybody was just kind of ball watching that pass too in behind the line it's a really good pass there but like I I wasn't a fan of just how non-reactionary to that ball going behind the back line 
um, uh, it, it felt the whole the whole sequence was for me. So, yeah, I have to go back and look at the video to to see that what you're talking about a little bit more. I'm actually looking at the still photo that I took of that goal, and honestly, AD looks pretty well placed to me. Uh, that ball does just go under her arm. It's not a if it's if it's anywhere a little bit different, it doesn't go in. So well, I'll take another look at that. But I see a lot of people yeah. um, just basically criticizing AD for that goal and for the second goal. Uh, mm -hmm. What have you thought of AD's play this year? And is there is that criticism fair of her that maybe it's time to give Silkowitz a chance? Um, I I don't I I mean. I personally am one that I'd like to see Silkowitz get a chance in like the NWSL MX Cup this summer, um, oh, yeah. or or uh, the you know the the Women's Cup here in KC. Like I, I think she needs to get a shot in something like that. The question is, <clears throat> you know, for uh, in this situation, right? I don't think AD has been having her best year, and like I I think she might admit to not having her one hundred percent best year either. Um, she also has kind of started slow in each of the last two seasons that I've covered this team and really kind of turned it on in the summer, um, and, and started kind of playing really lights out and, you know, blind, uh, almost blindly confidently making insane save after insane save. Um, the other thing that I question on the whole thing is like, you, you can acknowledge that a goalkeeper is not playing well, um. But at the same time, the question is, is the replacement actually a better option? And right. like, I, the, obviously you say, okay, okay, you got to give an opportunity to prove that. Silkowitz has literally not made an appearance in the National Women's Soccer League. So like to just say, oh, AD French isn't playing well, we got to go to the backup. The backup ain't a sure thing either. Right. Um, and I, I think she's a quality keeper. I think she's got a, a, a good future from what we see in her and from her in training she's a good goalkeeper and i won't be shocked if someday she's a starter somewhere yeah, even if if it isn't the current you know she i assume she will be a starter somewhere and get a shot um the thing though is, is just that like is that a better option and i don't know that it is and like you have to let that play out and is that playing out in training is she proving that she's a better option than ad even in training is she making it a competition in training um that those are like those those things with this whole situation where i know vlaco has been very open about i want competition i want all of this and i don't think ad's been playing very well and i would feel like if the way vlaco's viewed a lot of things here like we literally haven't seen alexis Spanstra in like four or five games um you know other players are playing better than her right now and she can't get on the field um yeah. uh kristen hamilton and, when she was healthy and lauren Right. Uh, same thing right so like these things these things are happening here and like if it the, the question is whether or not she gets an opportunity but she does with it at this point because if she's not like pushing ad to the point where she's kind of showing maybe she should get an opportunity if ad's play doesn't continue to be the greatest or at the level that we've come to expect from her um then then so then then I think that's where you kind of look to make a change. But the numbers are not great for AD um, this year, and I think it's just kind of it's one of those things where um, I I I I don't know what the answer is um, because there's there's you know AD's vice captain. You don't make changes uh, like that with, with players that are influential. Um, you don't bring in competition, further competition. So, I don't know. I'm rambling. Someone said, "I don't know, man." I think <laughs> if if Vlaco was seeing in training that Sokowitz was better, then she probably gets a chance. And at the same time, uh, I, I don't worry about the vice captain part as much as the fact that they haven't lost a game. She may not have been at her best. She's playing okay. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I don't think she's been at her peak for the last, well, since she's been in Kansas City, quite honestly. She's had her ups and downs even while she's been in Kansas City. But at the same time, it, they haven't lost a game. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. She was the the player at the last availability before this game. And I asked Flacco kind of like about her ahead of time, just, you know, because you usually ask about the player you're going to have an opportunity to speak to a little bit later, right? And mm-hmm. he's basically, I forget how he phrased it, but uh, she hasn't made a mistake that cost us a goal. Uh, you know, she hasn't just passed a ball to every every goalie in the league is just like giving up a ball to somebody that scored a goal on them. And mm-hmm. I think that's what he was referring to. Like she's done this in the past, in the last couple of years where she's played a ball out to somebody in the top of the box and they just put it back in for a goal. She hasn't done that this year. She, in this game, she did pass a ball or leave a ball hanging out there for somebody. It just didn't turn into a goal the other way. So there was a mistake that uh, kind of led to that, but didn't. Yeah. And I mean, you could also say like, look at the goal that they could see in Houston. Some of that's like, why some of that's on her yeah as well um but yeah i and i don't it's there's a lot of really good goalkeepers in the nwsl too so being the goalkeeper that statistically has not been the best in the league um means like like it's difficult right there's like i think three or four like national number ones in this league uh like and players that could be national number ones uh as goalkeepers in this league like the goalkeeper pool in the nwsl is stupidly deep and well it's only 14 uh, teams so it's there's a lot of good keepers but like but even in england right like mary erps is by far the best goalkeeper in England. And it's it's like not close. There's nobody else that you could even like say, well, maybe. Um, and if Mary Earps was not playing for England, England would be like, oh crap, that's not good. Um, if, if Alyssa Nair is not playing for the U.S. national team, there's like three other goalkeepers that I'm like, yeah, I feel comfortable with Casey Murphy. Yeah, right. I feel comfortable with, uh, I, I feel comfortable Jane. with Jane Campbell these yep. days. Like Jane Campbell's playing out of her mind. So like, there's a lot of really good goalkeepers in the NWSL. Um, and, you know, I also too, like, I, I just, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's one of those where like, yes, the goalkeeper we play could be better. And I think we could all agree with that. Um, but you have an unbeaten team and like kind of at the point where you're playing, well, this team has to be perfect. Like, like, oh, who's the weak links? We got to upgrade there. That's not how this works in a salary cap league for one. Nope. You could try to, but it's it's much harder to do that. This isn't just like Real Madrid, go pick who you want and let's build a super team, right? Like right. this is this is this is the roster that they've got. You want to win with. five nothing every game, man. You want to give up no shots. Well, if you, you know if you do you that, you don't need do. a keeper. It, here's the thing. If you're if goalkeeping is the reason why they don't win the NWSL, like the sole reason why they don't win the NWSL championship, uh, like in the playoffs, right? Say something catastrophic happens and it hasn't been a good year and there's been some mistakes like that. But then then you think about this, like having a down shot stopping year is not a, a point where you're ready to make a change. And I think that's kind of like, that's my feeling on it too, because like I said too, even if all of the situation was that you needed to make a change on the roster, I don't know that you're getting anything better than what you've got with AD right now. No, you're getting something different. And, simple. and we don't know that she would be better. Yeah. yeah. Different is not always better. Yep. Right. Um, I know there's a few things more to talk and we've only got a couple more minutes left on the current uh, session. Do you want to come back for a third segment? We can blaze through them. All right. Do we need to blaze through them or do we need to like, because I, I don't know that we need to like talk about these things. Like, okay. Vanessa DiBernardo went out with Vanessa. what would appear to have been another concussion. Again, this is appearances, not anything we've heard. Uh, I was told that players were off today and they were still being evaluated. You heard anything different? I have not heard anything different. Um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty nasty collision. Um, I don't think the Chicago player had any intent other than to run through Vanessa DiBernardo, and I think that's a problem. And I understand why Vatko is asking for the league to review it. Um, she does not have her eye on the ball 
at all. She just wanted to run straight through Vanessa DiBernardo. And for a yep. player who's now had a very serious history with concussions, um, that's really dangerous and unfortunate. And the player was not even reprimanded, carded, anything um, for the challenge. And yeah. uh, that that's really disappointing. I felt... And in a larger note about the game against Chicago, I felt the referee had zero handle on the game and at multiple times was putting players' uh, safety in danger with the way that he was calling the game. And it turned out that way with the Vanessa DiBernardo challenge. So, um, what rough can, night. If Vanessa does have a concussion, it may be a while before she comes back. Uh, last year, she went for a long period without coming back from a concussion. Uh, what's the players that can fill in for her um i mean you're probably pretty comfortable with the midfield of claire hutton uh lola bonta and uh tabinia tabinia um but at the same time uh you know as a as an attacker and and someone going forward i think the person that you have in mind of course is tabinia um but you know even if you needed to spell you know if you needed Hutton needed to be out for instance like let's say she picked up an injury or let's say you know she is still very young and she needs some kind of time out to the game just to kind of watch again and you know, you know I coaches do that with young players a lot but they'll, they'll throw them in the deep water for x amount of games and then they'll pull them back out and then throw them back in um if something like that kind of happens then you've got a Bailey Feist in there um Desi Scott is getting has been picking up more minutes and being able to close out end of match stuff um, Claire Lavoge can play as a 10 um, in that midfield as well. Um, that's honestly her better and more natural position than right. playing as a striker. Um, so I I do not have a problem with the where they're at on the roster with that whatsoever. Um, you also got Sophie Braun. You got Sophie Braun who could play as a defensive midfielder in that situation if you needed to shuffle things around. Um, so yeah, in the midfield, I think the current are that's probably the one place where they can sustain an injury and you're like, they'll be able to cover for it pretty well. And we, we saw good things from Bailey Feist when she filled in for Lola Bonta. So, yeah, and it's not that they don't have players that can fit in for that, but it's just that Vanessa has been so good this year. Um, mm-hmm. When she's been on her game, which has been most games, they have done really well with her. So that's probably yeah. the biggest loss. It's not like, Oh, we don't have enough players to fill the spot. It's just, there's nobody else that can do it. Like Vanessa can or has so far yeah. on this team, unless somebody has a yeah. breakout season that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else we need to cover in the, another minute? Cammy Larson, Cammy, not Cammy Larson, Camille Ashton is uh, now it, she switched water. She switched bodies of water. She's no longer in the river current. She is in the on river wave. current of the wave in San Diego. Um, yeah, she obviously, I think since the last time we bought it, she resigned from the team and then uh, is on her way. Now she has been announced as the general manager and sporting director, the title that Vlako Anadovsky holds, uh, along with his managerial duties down in San Diego. Um, we'll be interested to see interesting. how they do. Yeah. Um, there's been no introductory media for her yet. Um, so we have not, nobody's had a chance to ask her um why she felt that this was the direction for her so no yeah all right man uh we were just about out of time i appreciate you joining and i'm sure we missed a few things we could have covered please uh listen and let us know what else we can do appreciate everybody listening and we are out